What's up guys and gals and welcome back to Weekly Indie Newcomer, the weekly series that I do on Fridays where we take a look at an indie game that I've been playing over the course of the last week. This week I've been playing Infinite Space 3 Sea of Stars, which for some of you old school PC gamers will bring back memories of your time spent carousing throughout the galaxy, being an adventurer and generally having sort of Han Solo-esque adventures. Infinite Space 3 is in development right now, so it is an early access game and it has taken some time to develop. I got access to this game about a year ago in fact, it's been sitting in my library for a very very long time. And at the time that I first got it, it was like build, I don't even know, it was like build 10 or something like that. And over the course of the last year, they've been slowly updating it and getting it more into the shoes of a real game. Because when I first got it, there wasn't a whole lot to do in the game. You just kind of flew around, you looked at the pretty pictures, and you read the descriptions of the planets. Now, what do you do in Infinite Space 3? Well, as you might have assumed, it is a game where you take control of a spaceship. Obviously, it's on the screen right now. There's some planets involved. Obviously, there are some stars involved. It's in the name of the game. But you've got a short, limited amount of time to have a space pilot career. And so you fly throughout the galaxy. Your average game lasts about 15, 20 minutes. And you fly throughout the galaxy getting into all kinds of trouble. So you'll be exploring planets, you'll be finding treasure, you'll be fighting aliens. There's not a whole lot of storyline or lore unless you want to read about each of the planets, but I'm hoping they'll add that in later. I have kind of a little bit of a handicap right now in that I've never played any of the older Infinite Space games, and so I don't really know how to compare them, but I have wanted to play some of the previous ones because I've heard they're very well thought of. So before I waste too much time talking about nothing, let's go ahead and start the game on up, and we'll try and do a full playthrough in this episode of Weekly Indie Newcomer. Let's go! Okay, and so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta choose a captain name. I think I'll be our Captain Pickle Crickets. Arr. There we go. I don't know why I'm doing a pirate voice in space, but we're gonna be pirates in space. And after we do that, pick Pickle Crickets. There we go. It's it's pluralized. He just he doesn't have one cricket on his pickle. He has multiple crickets. And so now we've got enemy strength normal. That's fine. If you want to make it harder, you get these multipliers that make you get a higher score. The point of the game is to get the highest score possible by doing the most adventurous space stuff. And so it's great if you make the game harder by making the nebular density more thick or by making the enemies more badass, you will of course get a correspondingly high score. Let's go, our correspondingly. There we go. That's the word that I was looking for, but unfortunately it didn't come out of my mouth the way that I wanted it to. Ah, the story of my life. Things not coming out of my mouth. Off we go! Okay, and so we start off in Hope, which is the Terran homeworld, a shining pearl in the blackness of space. Hope is the new home of humankind in the galaxy. It is a temperate grassland planet, perfectly suited for human habitation. Heaven's, er, Haven Station is the center of the Terran space activity with a busy trading post, shipyard, and space fleet office. And obviously they're selling, like, I don't even know what that is. It looks like he's selling a very, very unhappy jack-o'-lantern that appears to be... Well, rotten at the bare minimum. I'm not really. I, I think that one might be out of season, but I like how they've got an OMG sign. I would go to that store. And so the first thing that we need to do, go away, tutorial. I don't need you. I've played this game before. The first thing we need to do, look, if we click another planet, nothing happens because we have no spaceship, unfortunately. And so we kind of have to get ourselves a spaceship. And the game so delightfully offers you a whole bunch of ships down at the bottom right here that you can purchase. If you want that to go away, you can just click this right here. It goes back up. It goes back down. It has all kinds of cool functions. Okay, it has two functions. It goes up and it goes down. Let's go ahead and we're gonna buy the constellation these other ships So there's like a scout ship right here. It can't fight worth anything, but it's fast This ship I think is like a frigate or something like that. Is it? It's a survey ship Okay, so that's for if you just want to fly around and be non-violent I'm not interested in non-violence this ship right here is typically the one that I pick it is the constellation a Terran Corvette Its name is randomly assigned each time you play the game. It is equally popular among private adventurers and space pirates so, the Corvette class strikes a balance between affordability, speed, and Zephyr power. So, we will bring the DACA to the galaxy. Look at that. Big old cannon right there and a missile launcher. So, tons of DACA. Maybe a little bit of explosions might be coming with this thing. Who knows? All in this pleasant, weird pea soup green color. I don't know. It's more yellowish, I suppose. And so, now we've got a ship. Here it is the top left-hand corner of the screen. It comes with its own array of standard equipment, all of it equally terrible. And so, we've got Neptunium railguns for close-range combat. We've got Impaler missile racks, which is just as threatening as it sounds. In fact, that is actually a really, really good weapon. If you can stack a bunch of those on one ship, you could fire from across the entire map and just wreck stuff with it. It can actually be pretty hilarious. We've got a fission drive, which 
it runs on fish. That's the only difference between it and any other normal engine that you would use. We've loaded it through a fish, and it just it stinks really, really badly. Like, people never want to come onto my ship with me, but what can you say? And then we've got a fusion tube thruster. If you need your tube thrusted, that'll get it done. Over here, we have an electron matrix shield. No idea. I'm assuming it uses electrons configured into some sort of matrix in order to shield us if I had to go out on a limb and sort of hypothesize what that shield might do. So we can go to... Zuma Shamali. That's a really, really long name for a system. Let's go, and it'll take us 152 days. Now, what you want to note is at the top right-hand corner right here, you'll see it says 9,125 days left. That is because that is the time limit that has been constrained upon the game. Some people don't like that, and that will be an instant turnoff with this game. The first time I did it, I was like, I don't like that at all. Why can't I explore the entire galaxy at my own risk? Well, that would not make it infinite space, I guess, because from what I understand, infinite space has always had a time limit. It's more of an arcade game than anything else. You can play this game in 15, 20 minutes, which really makes it a great game to just have sitting on your laptop or something when you go to the DMV or, you know, anywhere else where you might be waiting in line for a moderate amount of time. But let's go. It's an F4X green star. I don't know. I'm not... I have no idea what that means. I'm not an astronomer. Let's go! Are there rocks on the planet? That's all that I care about. And so on Coriolis, an arid marine planet, we found ourselves a plasma worm. A weird energy creature native to starship systems and core temporal logic circuitry. A plasma worm eats troublesome stray probability eidolons and is classed as a very helpful temporal parasite. I have no idea. There's a lot of big words right there, but we're going to take this and we're going to load it into our cargo hold because it counts as treasure and we can sell it other places. And that's pretty much how this game works. You go to different planets, sometimes there's treasure, sometimes there's an encounter that you have to resolve before you get the treasure. In a lot of ways, it's a lot like a board game, actually. This is how a lot of adventure board games work, where you just move around to different locations, you sort of draw a card for an encounter, and if you succeed at the encounter, you get, like, random treasure. This game is pretty much like that, except sometimes you just get free treasure. Next, we will go to Zelazny. Onward! Okay, downward. Ooh, we found an enemy. Okay, so this is the battlefield display, and I'm going to play it just so you can get a feel for how the game is. Let's go ahead and deploy our ship to the sector here. And it's a Muktian, a highly intelligent yellow slug-like being. Muktians usually spend their long lives deep underground. The Explorer cast have returned to the surface and recently developed space travel. Since we cannot at once perceive your intentions, we offer you this chance to leave our star system. Know, however, that if you refuse, we will be first to protect our investments by any and all means. Well, what's he gonna do, slime all over me? Let's ride! We can totally take this thing, and so you can pause the combat at any time by pressing the space bar. If you want to, you can, like, wheel your ship around like that and make it fly all over the place by holding down the clicker, or you can cancel it out. If you want to attack something, you just click on it. And so for now, hey, don't, I didn't say to turn the ship. Go over there. Fire missiles! Fire missiles! There they go. Ah! They're returning fire! I don't know how this is going to work for us. We might lose. We we run the risk of a horrible death right now. I'm just throwing it out there. Although, I... Oh, we got him. We got him. Come on! Get it done! And so at the bottom, you will see we have two health bars. One is our shield and one is our health. These are our different units on the top. I'm thinking that later on... They may make those, like, destroyable or damageable or something. I don't know. They turn different colors while you're in combat, but it doesn't seem to do anything just yet. They're all repaired back up to, like, perfect after every fight. There's a lot of things promised in this game that I'm hoping get implemented because this game really does have the framework to be a fairly fascinating adventure game. We got the Torque of Babylon, a strangely engraved ebony headpiece with inset gems and mystical all-seeing eyes. Legend, the Torque was one of Lord Babylon's favorite prized artifacts because it grants the wearer the boon of hypervision. Hypervision sounds awesome. I mean, I have really bad eyesight, so hypervision sounds pretty dope. But in any case, it's an awesome piece of shiny jewelry that we can wear to the club and hopefully impress space females with. We'd be like, hey, you see my awesome headpiece? I call this peacocking. It's how I get attention at the club. All right, let's find our way to a new system. I, all of these, you see these little clouds right here? They make you go really, really slow unless you have an engine that's built for nebular travel. If you can't make it, if you don't have an engine, it like wastes half the game with you flying through these clouds, so don't do it. You want to wait until you get a nebular engine and then you'll come back and try and explore all these. In theory, the best score you can get is at 100% and winning all of your battles and not running away, but I've yet to have a game like that. I've had some that are close to perfect where I've explored like 97% and won most of my battles, but I've never completed the whole thing yet. Off we go! Wait, what did we do? It said that we did something. Oh, no. All right, well, it said we discovered a black hole or something. Deploy! What are th Oh, these are those little, like, critter people. 
Yeah, the collations. These small marsupial creatures possess the unique capability of racial memory, which allows each short-lived generation of collations to be born with all the knowledge of their ancestors. Well, your children are about to learn a whole lot. Yep, your scent is undetectable due to ion storm residue. We must insist that you proceed no further. The elders authorize the destruction of your vessel and any others you control if you do not obey. Psh, I don't listen to marsupials. Yip cha, you dare attack? The wives of our elders weep for you, even as the old ones begin the war dance. Let our spears be tipped with poison, let the song of our victory be sung forever. May your tongue go back inside your mouth. You're looking a little- I had a cat that couldn't put her tongue back in her mouth. Because, like, her teeth had fallen out in the front, and so her tongue would just stick out all the time. And she was really, really smart, but everybody assumed that she was stupid because she couldn't put her tongue away. It was a tooth thing. Can we win this? Ah! Oh my. We are being fired upon. After him! Let him not escape! Alright! And so we have destroyed all of the nasty little collations. And so now, for some reason they let us hang out at their house, which is the Great Lodge. After you murder a whole bunch of their people, they're just like, Hey, you want to trade with us now? So I guess they like to minimize their risk. They figured that we already destroyed their vanguard. They might as well be friends with us. So deep in the forest, living trees have been carefully shaped to create the Great Lodge, where Kalatian tribes gather to trade goods and share the wisdom of their elders. And so this is one of the places where you can trade, and they trade based on credit right here. So you see how all of these little things at the bottom have those two coins at the top left hand? Everything you trade has a value. So for example, if I gave the Torque of Babylon, we would get five credit, which we could then exchange for a Nebular Extent Calculator, which makes our scanner range a little bit better. Or an Ion Flux Warp Drive, which allows us to move fast in a vacuum, but allows us to move horribly in a nebula. So neither of these looks incredibly interesting, and so we will be on our way. Let's go to Duet. Duet sounds like a place that has nice music. Maybe some nice loving music. Something to put up while you're laying down by the fire or something, maybe? I don't know. Asgard, or Asgard, depending on how you want to pronounce it. If the planet's ass is guarded, I mean, it doesn't seem like a bad idea. We found a crippled Muktian Corvette. A noble Muktian skipper and his crew are standed. How do we know that he's noble? Does he have, like, I don't know, does he have new tentacle thingies? It seems like, how would you design clothing for a slug? That seems like a really, really unpleasant wet experience. Being a slug tailor. Eh, whatever, let's slug it out here. A noble Muktian skipper and his crew are stranded here. After their ship is repaired, they join you as interstellar observers and representatives of their kind. Now, interestingly enough, if we had had this ship with us earlier when we had met the Muktians, they would not have attacked us and we could have just bypassed that encounter entirely. Because this little dude would be like, Yo, I'm making snail noises at you. And they'd be like, Whoa, they've got snail noises. We're so excited about snail noises. And then we would have become friends with their people. But now we're not friends with their people. Well, we're kind of friends with their people. We're in this weird limbo space. We've sort of been friend zoned by the Muktians. But they just don't want to, I don't know, they're not interested in spooning. So, this new ship, it has its own equipment. Ah, ooh, we can put things in the slots if we so desire. He comes with a missile launcher. He also comes with a molybdenum cone cannon. Now, molybdenum is, an, is a type of mineral. So, I'm assuming it's like a rock launcher of some kind. I, I don't know. It launches molybdenum cones at the enemy. So, all I can assume from that is that they found molybdenite and they're firing it at the enemy. Maybe molybdenum is different from molybdenite. I don't know, but molybdenite I actually studied for a while in college. Let's go back to Iblis! And so these guys can actually deploy to combat with us too. Let's have a look. Oh good, these guys are nice. The Klakar, the noble Klakar race of avians seek trade and not war. As the custodians of interstellar commerce, they purvey goods to many races throughout the galaxy. As they have for a thousand generation. They also make, they wear bird pants. I like their, I mean... They like to leave their tummies exposed, but I like their bird pants. Their bird pants are pretty dope. I like how the knees go backwards. They've also got fingerless toe gloves, just so they can be edgy in sort of a breakfast club kind of way. Incoming message! We, the exalted Klekar, wish to parlay with your humble race. We offer worthy goods and services and trade for technology, artifacts, and life forms. To summon us at any time, utilize our trade beacon. I think that that would have been funnier if it was spelled beak, as in like the beak, maybe. I don't know, maybe that's too goofy. But I would have spelled it Beacon because they have a beak. You know. And so they gave us the Klakar Beacon. And so at any time, we got a limited vacuum collapser. What does that do? That seems like it would make Hoover really, really upset. A doomsday bomb which destabilizes a limited area of space-time, causing the vacuum of space itself to collapse into a lower energy state, destroying everything within five light years. Oh my. Good news, everyone! I've got a, I've got a doomsday device. This is pretty awesome. 
I'm channeling my inner Farnsworth right now. This is great. I'm so stoked about the fact that I have a doomsday weapon. Now, at some point, we can actually sell that. You can also, they're still here. You see how their ship is rotating the planet still? We can click on them down here, and we can trade with them if we wanted to. I don't know what their credit looks like. It looks like they may just be part and parcel trading. I don't know. What happens if I bring the... Let's sell something that's not worth that much first to find out. Okay, so they part and parcel trade. So this is a little bit different from the previous group that we found. The Klakar will allow you to trade any item for any item. So it's kind of like a flea market. You could just be like, I have this thing. You have that thing. We both have no clue what they're worth. Let's swap them and hopefully I get the better deal. And this is actually a great place to get yourself some good stuff. So the Graviton Implosion Drive. Not to be, consumed, not to be confused with the Gramaton Implosion Drive, which actually does a great job at killing Christian Bale. However, the Graviton Implosion Drive has... That's probably the best drive in the game if you're not going through nebulas. I may consider purchasing it. Let's put that away for a moment. The Quantum Corkscrew Thruster. That sounds sexy. An advanced quantum mechanical propulsion system. Oh, so this is in combat. Okay, so that's an in combat engine. I forgot to differentiate. So this engine right here is for in combat. This engine right here is for on the world map. There we go. Now I have differentiated. Do they have anything else that I want? A Mison Lattice Shield. A gossamer bubble of Mison particles that completely envelop the starship. That seems pretty awesome. Although the multi-bot repair drone is really, really, really good. Basically what this does is if your shields go down, it repairs your hull actively in the middle of combat so that you regenerate really, really fast. All of these are great items. And so we kind of want to get rid of some of the terrible things in order to make this work a little bit better, but... Hmm. We can use this at any time, which will call these guys back to us. So if we find better stuff, we can call them to us and buy the other thing that we want from them. So I suppose for right now, we'll go for the thing that gives us the best chance of getting a better score, which is being able to navigate the galaxy faster. So let's get the implosion drive. We will now install that on our ship. All of the ships, I think, match your fastest speed, or maybe it takes an average or something. I don't know. It seems like you move a lot faster. And as you can see, it has made our vacuum travel look a lot better right there. And so as we ride our wonderful vacuums throughout the galaxy, it's like an upgrade of witch, like witches ride brooms. They've adapted to stay up with the times. We're kind of like a witch pirate type thing. We fly on a vacuum. But anyways, let's go over here to Janus. I'm done making bad humor. We found a proton matrix shield. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's awesome, but it looks pretty good. Is it better than what I have? Let's find out. An electron, so 233. Three. This is usually how I do it, is I go 233, three, and that one's 342. Two. So that one has 9. That one has 8. So yes, this one is better. And so now things have gone up. We recharge faster. The strength is a little bit better, but its reset time takes a little bit longer. Okay, that's fine. Let's go to... CMAC! An ion impulse thruster. The advanced propulsion system that utilizes... Uh, that seems kind of terrible. I'll probably just barter it off later. It looks like its max speed is really, really good, but it takes you a while to get there. We can go to Bryn. I can't tell if that's inside. The best way to tell right here is if you click on this, it'll say at least 86 days. That means that you have to travel through a nebula. Otherwise, it'll give you 106 days. It'll say something specific. So if you're ever wondering whether or not you're going to hit a nebula trying to go to a place like that, you click on it, and it'll give it away right here in the description. That little bit of variability or in, that little bit right there of uncertainty lets you know that you are indeed going through a nebula. Let's go to Auric. Auric sounds like an awesome hero from a fantasy novel. We got the Golden Ganat, the intrinsically wrought, intricately wrought, I'm sorry, I can read. The intricately wrought Golden Gnat is one of the smallest automatons ever constructed. The Gnat was actually a spying device used by Lord Fomax. It was created by the mad artificer, Zabnoth. Okay, that really doesn't mean that much to me, but sure. I will take your treasure from you, Auric Planet. Ooh, this place looks, let's find out. Moktians, come to my aid! Oh, it's the Erlequai. The Erlequai are kind of assholes. I mean, they're not really assholes because they're like weird, I don't know, they're floaters. The Erlequai are large luminescent hemispherical floaters who feed on fear and death. Physically weak, they are natural space navigators due to their aquatic heritage. No harm is met. We wish to commune with you and share colors, music, and peace in the galaxy. Our way is kindness. Do not fear us, formidable ones. Let us embrace. Yeah, they're gonna try and murder me. And I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't know if I should run away or not. This seems risky for me. Are we going to win or are we going to die? Oh, I think we might die. Oh, no, we won. Hooray. Recharge your shields, noble Moktians. Oh, get dealt with. Get dealt with, Erlequai. Look upon my missiles and despair as your ship spirals into the void. 
I destroy you, you nasty little man of war looking morons. Ah! We got the Vortex of Shining Deals, and so we're actually on the Urlaquai homeworld, which once again, we have annihilated all of their military, and so now they want to be friends with us. And it looks like they trade on the normal credit system. And so let's see, they've got a Sardion Optimizer. This is really good. So basically what this is, it's a weapons optimizer. It makes your accuracy and speed a lot better on your weapons. And so if you have this equipped, your ship shoots super fast, and it also targets super fast, and it tends to not miss quite as much, which... That's a pretty good boon to have. The Graviton Implosion Drone. Don't I already have one of those? I thought there could only be one of an item in the universe. I learned something today. You could have multiples of the same item in the universe. I don't think I've ever seen that happen before. Hmm. Interesting. What a wonderful world it is. Well. I don't really have anything here that I totally want to trade off for... The only thing that I would want is the Sardion Optimizer. And it is a really, really good piece of equipment. Like, it makes you a badass, but... What does the accelerator beam do? Eh, it's a lightning gun. I propose that we walk away. We've been... Actually, I kind of want the Sardion Optimizer. Kind of want the Sardion Optimizer. So I'm willing to give up that. And I'm willing to give up that. For the five credit we need to get the Sardion Optimizer. Hooray! We have a Sardion Optimizer. Mmm, I'm feeling optimistic already. Let's go over here to Dyad. I mean, it's got Dye in the name of the planet, which makes me really, really worried, but it's D-Y, so all I can assume is that we're gonna get turned into a different color here. You know, it'll probably be fine. There's Urlaquai, and I don't know who that is. The Zorg. A diminutive biped with an oversized hairless head. Physically weak, Zorg possess bizarre mental capabilities. A helmsman can fold space by rubbing its head with a charged iridium cranial wax. That seems like it would lead to a lot of residue on top of your head. You have to shower pretty frequently or something. Let's see. Hail, Star Travelers! We have spotted an enemy fleet here. Since we are at peace with, or you are at peace with us, will you ally with us in order to read this star system of hostile forces? Hell yeah! Death to the Urlaquai! Hear our thrilling tones. Observe our color play. We embrace you as the space-born food of mutual need. Fulfillment excites us. We greet you with urgency. I don't think I've ever had an urgent greeting. I'm not sure what to say about that. We advance, although he'll probably kill it before we get there, or be killed. He's actually not doing so well. Oh, there goes the Missile of Death and Pain. Kaboom! It looks like the Missile of Pain got there first. The Missile of Death, unfortunately, wasted ordinance. What can you do in this situation? In return for the combat, it looks like we got ourselves a Plasma Blaster. A short-range tactical gun that fires a disruptive bolt of superheated plasma and charged particles. That seems pretty awesome. I think I shall take it. And then we shall equip it upon our ship instead of the Neptunium Railgun, which is a 242... That is a 342. All right. I love all around better upgrades. Hurrah! Did I say hurrah? I don't think I've ever said hurrah before. That's a new word for me. Let's go to Karn. It sounds threatening, but I bet we'll be fine. We found the Crystal Court Space Mart, which means, oh good, they trade on credit here too. They don't have anything that I want. All of the Trust me when I say all of those things sucked. I've noticed that we've pretty much used up our time in Weekly Indie Newcomer, so I'm trying to trying to get you to experience the entire game. Gog. Isn't that the name of the guy in Peak Show? It was the guy that Jeremy knew in high school that they made him like, I don't know. They made him do something, and then they made him do something terrible. I forget what it was. But then, now that they're all grown up, Jeremy's a loser, and Gog like owns like a major record label or something. Anyways, the Micro Meteorite Gun, a short-range tactical projectile weapon that magnetically charges and propels an expanding cloud of particulated Micro Meteorite material. Wow. I respect the alliteration in the final half of that word right there. Let's see if it's better than anything we're equipped with. Molybdenum Cone Cannon, 242, 421, so no, indeed it is not better. Well, we'll use it as trade fodder because sometimes there are encounters where you can trade guns for good stuff. Do I go through a, okay, so I go through a nebula to that one. Let's go to Zappa. Ooh, enemies. Oh no, we need to run away right now, maybe. I don't know. The Garthan, a large carnivorous, these guys suck. There we go. They're going to try and murder us. Just think of them as like Klingons. They're generally unhappy. They don't have a very good temper. They tend to fly off the handle and punch things a lot. Mostly unpleasant to be around. Mostly unpleasant to be around. Just bear that in mind. Now with missiles, we might be able to stay alive a little bit longer. I don't know. We'll find out. Oh, get wrecked, noob. The only thing I will say about the combat in this game is there's not really any need to like fly around unless you're doing like a long ranged build where you're like sniping. If you're sniping, you can kite around and move, but if you build like I do with my ships where I just put the biggest guns possible on them, 
it tends to be perfectly fine. Oh, we're on the Garth and Homeworld. So once again, we've slaughtered a military, and we're allowed to hang out here. It looks like they have wholesale TNT. Wholesale enormous serrated bear traps. Huh? Who doesn't want a serrated bear trap? They've got what looks like, I don't know, a mushroom helicopter? I'm not really sure. I, I don't know. And a fine collection of scimitars. Ooh, they have a multi-bot repair drone too, and theirs is cheaper. Isn't it? A hyperfoam injector. What that does is when you take damage, it injects foam into the crevices to make it go away. I want the repair drone. Let's sell the micro meteorite gun. That'll give us too much, though. I don't want to overdo this. We only need three, so maybe I'll trade the... And as you can see, the prices change depending on what planet you're on, too. So certain races will want the Torque of Babylon more than others. They want the Doomsday device. Go figure. Oh, God. Well, I don't feel good about giving them a Doomsday device, but... Honestly, I kind of like the concept of me being the only person in the galaxy with a Doomsday device. They can have the Harmless Golden Gnat in exchange for their multi-bot repair drone, which I will now equip on my mothership. All right, getting better and better and better. We're having a pretty good run right now. We're having a pretty good run. Paragon, can we get there? Yeah, let's go. Ripcord O'Reilly. And so he's a veteran spaceship test pilot. He got lost in space. And so he's in like a little fighter ship. He doesn't really do much, but he's got a cigarette and he's got kind of an elongate face that looks like he's just licked something sour lately all the time. I don't know. He's nice to have around. He's got an airplane in the background for some reason, even though he flies a spaceship. I'm not sure. Let's go over here. A rogue freebooter. And so what we can do with this guy is it's a mercenary. And it's in a survey ship, I think. And what we can do is if we drop a gun into here, it'll join us. And so there it is. And so now we have an extra ship as part of our flotilla. Flotilla sounds like it would be a delicious food, but it's not. It's just a bunch of ships in space. Not to be confused with tortillas. Let's go down to Maroon. Hmm. This looks dangerous. Everyone! Oh, we might get dominated right here. The Tanru. So the Tanru are always assholes. Think of them as the Borg. They're always messing with people. Now, whether we win or not is going to depend largely on whether we can kill all these fighters before they close the gap with us. That's sort of the horrifying nature of our encounter. But what I can do is I can sacrifice this guy by putting him in front. And then we just sort of hope that, yeah, see... There we go. And so we survived with a little bit of help from our friends. We want him to attack right there. Fighter ship, go! Oh no, he's shooting at you with space shotguns! That's horrific. Annihilate him! Send him to binary hell! Binary Beelzebub, there we go. Ooh, it's a starship graveyard. This is one of the best encounters you can get because it's a big old pile of free stuff. So we lost our mercenary, but that's what mercenaries are for. You send them in first, and then they die, and then everybody else survives. We got a continuum render array, which is a scanner, and so we want to throw this on our ship here. And what you'll see is now we've got this gold thing expanding out from our ship. It allows us to see what's in zones next to us. So if you look, there will be... So for example, if there's an exclamation point over the top of it, it means there's combat there... If there's like a little glowing thing right there, it means that like there's a ship moving in between the locations. And so it allows you to basically figure out the consistency of the galaxy and find where the things are that you might want. Other things, we've got an electron matrix shield. All right, we've got that. And we've got a nebular ramjet drive. Ah, so that's the one that allows us to travel through nebulas. And so we'd want to equip that if we have to travel through nebulas. But our time is up with Infinite Space 3. So if you like the game, I'm going to have all the information down below. The universe is the same every time you play this game, I think. Not totally sure on that one. I'd have to look it up. I feel like it's the same every time. Like, the names are always the same. But the events at each location are randomized and changed around. And so if you like the way that the game is playing, it is still in development right now. They've just gone, they had a first round Kickstarter, which was used to fund all the music and all the art assets, which they're currently adding into the game. And they're doing a second round of Kickstarter now to fund the remainder of the content. And so the game has been in development for a while. It's had like 44 different builds, as you could tell from the beginning. I like it. I play it every now and again. I mean, I keep it installed on both of my computers, my laptop and my main desktop. And every couple days, I go through and I play once or twice. It's that sort of game. It's not a game that you're going to get like a huge amount of gameplay out. Oh, shit. So we've got a supernova. That means we've got to get the hell out of here before... Oh, there's an item on the planet, though, too. Lookout frogs. <laughs> it's a frog with a weird thing on its head. All right, come on, froggies. I like amphibians. You can come along with me. But yeah, the game is not the sort of game that you're going to get, like... What is that? A black hole? What does that do? Do you wish to continue or turn around? Uh, we have to continue. 
No! All right, we got sucked into a black hole on accident, but we got a good score. Anyways, we had to run away when the planet blows up right there. If you get caught inside the blast, you die. And so basically we had to choose whether to die in a black hole or to die in the explosion. And dying by spaghettification and being hurled throughout space and time seemed a little bit more interesting to me. I don't know. I Being sucked into a black hole from what I understand seems like one of the more interesting ways to go. But yeah, the game is not the sort of game that you're going to get like a huge in-depth experience out of. Instead, I would describe it as sort of like a pub arcade game where you can like drink a beer, relax for 15-20 minutes, play it through, maybe do two or three playthroughs and then you'll be good and you'll come back a week later and play it a couple more times. At least that's how I treat it. So if you like the game, look down below and I've got all the information for the Steam links that you might want. Take care out there everybody, my name is Splattercat. This is Weekly Indie Newcomer where I talk about a game that I've been playing over the course of the last week. This week we were looking at Infinite Space 3 Sea of Stars. I hope you enjoyed our lovely little swim and I will see you all later. Take care everybody, I do.